Anyone have any question before we get started? Any questions, students? About format of the class and everything everyone has. Any questions? So far, so good. Okay, all right. So if you don't have any questions, so we're gonna take a brief review first. So let's talk about basic differentiation and integration. So this is the basic from calculus one. Let's do a warm up. So we want to do a quick review on this thing because this is uh, the basic thing that you also need to solve differential equations. So all you need to know is when you do the differentiation, okay, differentiation. The idea from calculus one that you know is uh, if you have fx, the notation for differentiation, diff is f prime x. So everyone know this because you saw this notation before. This is called derivative, right? And then you also know that you have some formulas for a standard function. The one that you use a lot is differentiate x to the n. Right, so you're going to get n x to the n minus 1. So this is the first one that you use a lot. So number two you use a lot is uh, log x, right? Logarithm, uh, this is the logarithm base, uh, natural logarithm, right? It's a base e. That's what I mean, log x here. So if you differentiate log x, you're going to get 1 over x. And then also the thing that uh, I want you to uh, keep in mind that you can differentiate e to the x as well. So it's gonna get back to e to the x. This is the standard one that we use a lot. And also uh, for the trigonometric functions. So you only need to memorize, differentiate psi and differentiate cosine. Okay. This is all five functions. That is, you know, they are basic. So you need to know how to do this thing. Other than this thing, like the harder function or by part technique or partial fraction technique or anything else, if you need to do that, I will give you a formula in the questions. Fair enough, okay? So you just need to, know how to differentiate basic one like that. Well, the same thing with integration. So let's talk about integration. So basically integration is not the easy one. So you learn from Cal 1 already that integration is very, very hard because uh, you only have uh, the formula for integration, but you don't have the product rule or you don't have the quotient rule. Oh, one thing about differentiation. So for differentiation, it's Usually easier because you have the product rule, you have the quotient rule, so you have the chain rule as well. So you have so many rules in your hands that you can deal with differentiation. So this is why people say differentiation is easier in general. But for integration, this is a little bit harder. The notation for integration is if you have fx, if I say integrate, so I'm going to have this notation integrate fx dx. Uh, this notation that I box it, integration here, this is called indefinite integral, which is going to be the one that uh, people don't use it in real life because it's the same thing with antiderivative. Indefinite integral, you don't have the lower bound and upper bound. So it does not match with the situation in real life. So what you do is you're going to put a and B as upper bound and lower bound, usually you do that. Uh, and that is called definite integrals. But you know, they are this, in terms of calculation, they are the same thing because you're gonna use formula anyway. And if you have A and B uh, on the lower bound and upper bound here, so you can take the fundamental theorem of calculus and get it, get the answer. But uh, what I wanna review you is, 
what you need to know is if you integrate x to the n dx, so you're gonna get back x to the n plus one or n plus one plus c, right? Usually you get plus c here, but if you put the lower bound and upper bound, no need for plus c because c is gonna cancel out. All right. Uh, well, one thing is that this formula it does work when n is not equal to negative one, because if n equal to negative one, it's gonna be one over x. And that will get back to logarithm of x plus c. When you do logarithm, keep in mind that after log must be positive, oh, which means you need to put the absolute value. Always add absolute value to log x over there because you want to make sure that the thing after logarithm is positive. So that is the formula number two. So formula number two, e to get e to the x, you get back e to the x. This is a review from Cal 1. And also for psi and for psi, this is easy because you already know that integrate uh, psi, you're going to get negative cosine, right? And then also integrate cosine, you're going to get psi. Because this is, uh, you can rework back the formula for differentiation. As I told you that integration is harder because you don't have the product rule. You don't have the quotient rule. You don't have the chain rule for it. It's like a bit ridiculous. In Cal 1, you learn so many techniques to deal with integration. That was a nightmare, right? Well, but keep in mind that what we learned in this chapter and so on, we're gonna use just the basic formula here. Other than this, we will give you the formula. So don't worry. And usually the example that I will give you in class and also in the exam gonna be just use this formula, the one that I just, you know, show up in this slide here. So we are not going to go further to harder formula. Does it make sense? Well, that is the basic differentiation and integration, okay? All right. So, well, let's come back to our content. What is a differential equation? So I told you last time that, hey, if you remember last time we opened Wikipedia and we say that a differential equation is an equation uh, involving a function and its derivative, which means if you have a function and its derivative, you combine it together, that is called differential equations. For example, well, let's look at the example. You could have something like dy by dx. This is the derivative, right? Equal to x plus y. This is called a differential equation because it is an equation that combines x, y, and dy by dx. Okay, this is a differential equation. Fine. Or you could have something a little bit harder, like you can have dy by dx plus 2xy minus x squared equal to 3 cos x plus 1. This is still differential equations because it's, it is an equation that tell you the story about the relationship between x, y, and dy by dx. Anytime when you see x, y, and dy by dx in the same equation, that thing is called differential equations. Each differential equation has a unique technique to solve. So what are you going to learn is you are going to learn few techniques to solve differential equation. Does it make sense? Well, in real life, when you want to solve this thing, nowadays we have computers. So you can put this thing in computer or in Google. They, they're going to solve it for you. The software is going to solve it for you immediately. Nowadays, the technique is so fast. So you don't have to go back and start from the scratch. Because as a BB Tech student, maybe in the future, if you want to do it, you just put the equation in the Wolfram alpha.com. Or you can put it in the software called Mathematica. You put it in there, they're going to return you a solution. Fine. But, you know, as a basic side course, we're going to learn how to solve it by hand. 
So we are going to learn to solve it by hand first. But keep in mind that, yeah, in real life, you have software, you have internet. It's going to be a lot easier in real life. We, we just learn how it develops. So we're going to just look at the background before it. Just only the e EC background. I'm not going to go too far about how to solve differential equation. So let me introduce you something about the order of the differential equation first. So the order of the differential equation is the order. Look at it. It said that it is the order of the highest derivative present in the equation, which means uh, this is the differential equation of order one. Because this, the term that I put the cloud on it, this is the derivative. And the highest order of derivative in there, it's going to call order of differential equation. So this is the order one because the highest degree of dy by dx is one. Uh, dy by dx here, I found it, this is the order one as well because you only have the one uh, dy by dx over there. Uh, let's say if I have, if you have something harder like dy by dx, d square y b, dy by dx here, minus two dy by dx, like plus three x e to the y equal to zero. If I have some differential equation like that, you can see that uh, this is the second order derivative, right? From calculus one, you learn this is mean the differentiation two times, two times. So which mean, yeah, this is a little bit something something com more complicated because you see the second order derivative here. So which give this differential equation of order two. Does it make sense? This is going to be something a little bit harder to solve if you have more order. So in this class, we're gonna focus on order one. So we're gonna learn how to solve the order one um, differential equation, start from the basic and then for order two and so on, if you want to learn more, you can take more class. Uh, they, they have a class called differential equation, which is the, I think it is a junior class for math student. If you are interested, you can choose it as an elective course. So engineering students need to learn that class, but for BB Tech, you do not need to learn that class. So in that class, you're going to learn more and more technique to solve differential equations. Okay. so. Sometimes you're gonna see the word PDE, partial differential equation, and ODE, order ordinary differential equation. The difference between them is, you know, well, some of you say, Ajahn, the, diff the difference is, yes, is they have the word partial and ordinary, right? So the difference between PDE and ODE, it depends on the equation that it contains partial derivative or not. So we have not talked about partial derivative. So when you have function of more than one variable, so you can differentiate with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to any variable you want. So if you use partial derivative in the equations, so it's gonna call PDE. If you don't use partial derivative in the equation, it's gonna call ODE. So after you learn, uh, differentiation technique and integration technique in two dimensions. So you can understand this thing. So, but what we learn in this class for now, we're gonna learn just the ODE. So we're gonna learn just this, the notation that you're gonna see, it's gonna be dy by dx only. And it must be order one, it's just dy by dx. We are not going to learn order two and, and so on, okay? But I give you a big picture here because I know some of you are good at math and you say, oh, what Ajahn Munchai taught is so easy. So it just, you can, well, in that case, you can, you know, find more materials to study by yourself, okay? So before we get to the first uh, part of differential equation, which is called the separable equation. So let's take a step back and look at the, applications because this is really important because you need to know why you learn this thing first. 
to get to give you a motivation. Otherwise, you're gonna say math is so hard and it's boring and it's ridiculous, right? I don't know why we need to learn math. So this is really important, as I told you last time, that you're gonna see a lot of differential equation in so many fields, like fluid mechanics, circuit design, heat transfer, population or conservation biology. Even in economics, last time I saw I told you that option trading, like option, this is this is the one, how do I say one package for economic people, you know, when you want to invest something, so you can buy option. This is one one way that people can buy stock. So even in engineering, in biology, in uh, physics or in economics, everyone use differential equation because it's gonna be the basic thing that you can tell uh, derivative and, you know, derivative, derivative is the thing that very important because it's gonna tell you the rate of change, the rate of change of, of the thing, the object that you are interested in. So if you wanna involve the rate of change and X and Y in the same equation, you need differential equation. Okay, uh, some of you say that will I learn in this course how to solve all differential equations? The answer is no. So as I told you, we're gonna learn only the basic thing. So in the future, let's say you are interested in BB tech bio, bio technology, and suppose you get an equation, maybe the differential equation that you are working with in the future, it's gonna be order three or order four. Well, we are not going to learn order three and order four in this class, of course, but well, at least you have a basic idea what differential equation is. And in the future, if you have to face it by yourself, keep in mind you have a software or you have something that can help you to solve. And maybe when you face the order three, order four, order five differential equation, it's gonna break down. The technique gonna break you down to order one and order two and something so you can use the technique we learned in this class to solve it. Okay, well, this is why it is important. So hope you see it is important and we're gonna learn it now, okay. So we're gonna start from the solution. Let's, start, let's talk about the solution first. So this is really important because some of you have not seen it before and I want you to make, I want to make sure that everyone uh, is on the same page here. So because the solution of a differential equation is a function. It sounds weird at first, but it is true. For example, like, let's see. Uh, the differential equation that I have is d square y by the x square. Let's say this is the differential equation of order two plus four dy by the x minus five y equal to zero. This is a differential equation, right? Um, if I change my notation, this is gonna be y double prime plus four y prime minus five y equal to zero, right? This is, they are the same thing, okay? These two equations, they are the same thing. I just switch the notation. Well, because the notation dy by dx, this is the same thing with y prime. Right, I didn't do anything else. And then after that, well, I switch notation again. This is the same thing as f double prime x plus four fx uh, minus five y, uh, f prime x minus five fx equal to zero. You can see that here you have f double prime x, f prime x and fx. So when you solve for the differential equation, if someone asks you, hey, let's solve this thing. So if you solve this differential equation, the solution that you're gonna get is going to be fx equal to something. Right. It's a little bit complicated because the solution is a function. It is not just the number. Does it make sense? Compared to what you learned in algebraic equation before, this is what you learned in high school. Well, what you learn in high school, this is called algebraic uh, equation. So algebra equation you learn in high school is like x squared plus four x minus five equal to zero. And you say, oh, Ajahn, 
you can factor it ครับ this is x plus five this is x minus one equal to zero and you can get x equal to one and negative five well you can see that the answer for algebraic equation it's gonna be numbers the answer here gonna be just numbers the answer here is function for differential equation so basically you are looking for a function that fits into the differential equation sounds good well this is the first thing the first concept you need to know you are looking for the function or a function that fit into your differential equation okay let's look at example one together let's verify that the function y equal to c1 psi 4x plus c2 cosine 4x where c1 and c2 are arbitrary constant we need to claim that this one is a solution of the differential equation over there okay so differential equation that is given here is the y by the x differentiate two times and then plus 16 y equal to zero in other words you can write this thing as y double prime plus 16y equal to zero. Sounds good. So this is uh, a differential equation. Yeah, because it tells you the relationship between y and y double prime. Yeah, it is a differential equation. So the example one, they ask you to show that this one is a solution of this equation, uh, this differential equation. How do you know that it's gonna be a solution? Well, let's plug in and see it fits to this equation or not. So I'm gonna start by y equal to c1 psi 4x plus c2 cosine 4x. I didn't do anything, I just copied it from the question. Uh, if I differentiate one time, y prime, well, this come back to your calculus one technique, everyone. So c is constant, do not need to differentiate c1. Differentiate psi, you get cosine for x because of the chain rule. So you're gonna have number four as well. Am I going too fast? No, right? So differentiate psi for x. So you have cosine for x because of the chain rule. You need to differentiate inner function. So you get number four here. Sounds good. Hope it is not too fast for you. And then uh, C2 here, differentiate cosine, I get negative sine for X. So negative gonna show up here. And then because of uh, the chain rule, so I have number four as well. Does it make sense? Because differentiate cos, you get negative sine. And for X here, so the inner function gonna give you number four over there too. So you have that. This is Y double or Y prime. Next, I'm gonna differentiate one more time. So I get y double prime. So four C1 and then differentiate cosine, you get negative psi for X. And by the chain rule, I get number four one more time. Sounds good. And then minus four C2, differentiate psi, I get cosine for X. And then I have number four one more time because of the chain rule. And then, well, I simplify one more time. So I get negative 16 C1 psi 4x and then minus 16 c2 cosine 4x okay looks good to me i like it it looks simple and then after that well you want to verify that this equation is true everyone so y double prime plus 16 y if you can get it and it turn to zero you're done so we're gonna do it so copy that one negative 16 C1 psi 4X uh, minus negative C2 cosine 4X and then plus 16 times Y here. Y double prime is this. Uh, y, you need to put it in here. So C1 psi 4X, I copy from the question C2 cosine 4X. Yes or no? So let's see. Cancel. Cancel, right? Yeah, we're done, right? Because everything cancel out, so you get zero. We are done. So this is indeed a solution of a differential equation. 
this is this example i hope you can see that the solution for the differential equation is just a function you know here this is a differential equation when you solve it the answer is going to be a function so if it show up in the answer so what you can guess is you can guess the function you shouldn't answer like y equal to one it's like that does not make sense because the answer of the differential equation is not a number, it is a function. Okay, so far so good. So this is this thing you can see that the solution depends on constant C1 and C2. This is called general solution. If you specific numbers into uh, that constant C1 and C2, it's gonna call specific solution. So let's talk about another terminology here. So general solution and specific solution. When you solve for differential equation, so you can get general solution and you can get specific solution, depends on what they ask you. For example, let's talk about something easy first. So if you have differential equation dy by dx, equal to x so this is a simple one so if you solve this thing you're gonna get the solution y equal to x squared over 2 plus c this is the solution well we're gonna learn how to get the solution in a bit okay we're gonna learn how to get the solution in a bit but well let's suppose that you know that this differential equation is gonna give you the solution this one well, you can see it's pretty clear, right? Because if you uh, differentiate y one time, you get back x. Well, this is actually the solution of differential equation for sure. This thing is called general solution. General solution, everyone, general solution. General solution means you still have arbitrary constant here. It, we, you still do not know what that constant C is. This is called general solution. Uh, sometimes you're gonna see the problem like dy by dx equal to x, where let's say y1 equal to five. The thing that they give you here, this thing is called initial condition. The initial condition gonna be the one that gonna tell you that, hey, you can solve for that constant C by using that initial condition, okay? So for this one, if I wanna do that, so I can say, oh, I know that the general solution is y equal to x squared over two plus c. If I plug in, well, y one, y one equal to five mean, it's mean when x equal to one, we have y equal to five. So which means for this equation, you can simplify it to five, equal to one square over two plus C. And then you can solve for that constant. So that C is gonna be five minus one half, which is nine over two. And that means C equal to nine over two is your answer here. Uh, so you can, you can answer that the specific solution. So we're gonna call it specific solution now because you already specify the value of that constant. The specific, cons uh, the specific solution is y equal to x squared over two plus nine over two. This is the answer for this question. For this problem, if you specify y one equal to five, does it make sense to you? I hope it, I hope it does, okay? So sometimes people are gonna need general solution. Sometimes people are gonna need specific solution. It depends on the question, but if they want specific solution, you're gonna have initial condition with you, which means you need to solve for general solution first, and then you can plug in this thing to get your C constant, okay? Well, I'm done with the basic differential equation now. So what we talked in the first 15 minutes today, so let's recap again, everyone. So what we talked is we talked that, hey, when you have differential equation, people, your answer is gonna be a function. That's the first thing. The second thing is the solution has two ways to present it. 
The first one is you can use general solution. This is the general one, uh, which depend on the constancy. And another one is you can uh, find specific solution if the initial condition is given. Does it make sense? Okay. So far so good. Any question have for anyone have anything to ask or questions or something that you want me to clarify or something? Sounds good. All right, so we're gonna learn uh, about 20 minutes more before the break. So let's talk about the first step, the first step of the differential equation, the separable equation. So we're gonna learn how to get the solution now. Okay. Let's look at the definition first. Separable equation. A separable equation is a first order differential equation. Well, keep in mind, it is a first order now. So we're gonna have only dy by dx. We don't have the second derivative or anything. It's a first order. So separable equation is a first order differential equation that can be written in the form here. So if you see this form, dy by dx equal to gx times fy. dx here, this is a function of x. fy here, this is a function of y. So you need to have a product of something in terms of x and something in terms of y on the right hand side. This is what are you looking for? So you can see here that the name separable come from the fact that the expression on the right hand side can be separate into a function of x and a function of y. If the right hand side is a is like x times y, good. This is different. This is separable equation. If the right hand side is x squared times cosine y, still good. This is differential equation. Uh, this is st still separable equation. If you have something like x plus 2y, this is not a separable equation because you need a product between things in terms of x and things in terms of y. If you have differential equation in this form, the solution is easy because you can move, let, let's look at the technique now, you can move fy down here. So you see, move fy down here and move dx up there. So here, just simplify it. And then after that, you integrate on both sides. It will get back to your answer. If you don't believe me, let's look at example, okay? So example number two. Well, let's solve differential equations here. So first of all, you see the differential equation here. Okay, good, this is the first order because you have dy by dx on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have 6x squared over 2y plus cosine y. Looks complicated, but it's actually easy because you can view this thing as dy by dx equal to 6x squared times 1 over 2y plus cosine y. It is actually separable equation because you have a product of something in terms of x and something in terms of y separately, right? And then you, well, the technique say that move everything in terms of y to the left-hand side, move everything in terms of x to another side. Yeah. So we're gonna move everything in terms of y to the left-hand side. So simplify. Simplifying the given equation, the given differential equation. So my, my shorthand notation is DE. So simplify, simplifying the given differential equation yields uh, 2y plus cosine y here. So I move it up to the left, dy equal to 6x squared dx, right? Very simple because I move this thing up over there. And then dx, I move this thing up over there. If you don't understand what I mean by move, you can imagine that I multiply dx on both sides. So dx cancel out. And then I multiply 2y plus cosine y on both sides. So it's cancel out on this side, and then it's gonna show up on the left-hand side, right? That is what I mean by move dx up and move this thing up. 
So I multiply that thing uh, on both sides. So actually, well, after you have this thing, wow, well, integrate, then, then you integrate it. A piece of cake, right? People say, oh, John, why is it so easy? Yes, it is a piece of cake compared to, uh, compared to tasting the series before midterm. This is a piece of cake. And then uh, two y here, so you integrate, so you're gonna get um, two y square over two, right? Very simple, because you integrate y, you get y square over two. You integrate cosine, you get psi, and then integrate six x square, you get six x cubed over three. Well, actually when you do this, well, keep in mind, you need to do plus c here on one side and plus c on another side. But to just keep everything simple, we're going to say that this constant on this side can group up with this constant. So we're going to plus C only one time. Let's plus C here, just one time. Because the, uh, the constant is now arbitrary, which means you can group it up. What well, we're going to group the constant on two sides to one, one number called C. And then once you simplify, you get y squared plus psi y equal to 2x cubed plus c. Well, this is called general solution. And this is what they are looking for. So you can see that this is the general solution of this differential equation. If you differentiate this solution one time, so you're going to get back that. Well, you can see that the solution is a function. You see, the solution is an equation, it's a function. And well, it is not y equal to something, but because this term is hard, but it's still a function, right? The solution is a function. And this thing is called a general solution. Once you specific the initial value, so you can solve for c. Sounds good. Some of you may have a question, you know, I have heard before that students say, Atan, what if I say y squared plus psi y plus c equal to 2x cubed? Am I going to get it correct? This is, the, I mean, this is full credit or not? The answer is yes, this is also acceptable. So this constant c you can plus on any side, fine. Or some of you are gonna say plus c1 and plus c2 here, also fine. Well, because they are constants. They are arbitrary. Sounds good. Well, questions so far, you can uh, put the question in the chat if need. So we're gonna do, well, let's see, we're gonna do example two and three and then we're gonna have a break, okay? So example two here, uh, we have y prime equal to y times x squared plus one where y greater than zero here. So again, well, this is a technique. Everyone look at that. This is a technique. When you see y prime here, the basic technique is switch it to dy by the x. So it's a lot easier that way. So you switch it to dy by the x. Good. Good. And then you have that. And then you simplify it. So you get 1 over y dy equal to x squared plus 1 dx, right? Well, hope this is not that fast. dx up, y go down here. Okay, good. And then after that, you integrate on both sides. So Chalk, good. Indicate one over y. Well, we already do a review. This is log absolute y, right? Indicate one over y dy, you get log absolute y, and then equal to indicate x squared plus one. So this is x cubed over three plus x. Well, I need constant, so plus c. Well, choose to add constant on one side and anything else. So, well, here I have log y equal to x cubed over three plus x plus c. Well, I can get rid of my absolute value here because y greater than zero. So because y greater than zero, so I took absolute value out. And then now, well, this is a solution. You can answer now, this is a general solution. But if you want to simplify, so it's going to be y equal to e to the x cubed over three plus x plus c. Okay, this is better one. And also you can say this is e to the x cubed over three plus x times e to the constant. You can do it. 
because this is the property of the exponential function. And also, well, this is e to the constant, also a constant. So you can say this is actually c times e to the x cubed over 3 plus x. Well, this is the answer, the general solution. OK, sounds good. So well, when you solve it by hand, if you get up to this answer, you also you already get full credit. But you know, you can simplify it to that. You can simplify it to that. Keep in mind that when you do it in computer or in the software or, or in the internet in real life, the answer that the computer gives you going to be this form. Because computer, they are smart, you know. So they're going to simplify it from that to that for you. So because they can be simplified to many forms, so the form that you get, maybe it is correct, but it just, you know, you need to simplify to get the more compact form. That's what I mean. So yeah, the general solution can be, can be seen in different forms. That was the point that I want to give you for this question. Sounds good. All right, so before the break, okay, one more, okay. And then we're gonna have a break. I'm so ready for the break now. So example three, so let's look at the differential equation with initial value here. So the differential equation with the initial condition, we're gonna call it initial value problem. So if you read paper and articles and then you see the word, uh, you see the abbreviation IVP, IVP here, it's called initial value. Uh, it stands for, uh, IVP stands for initial value problem, sorry. IVP stands for initial value problems. So this is the one that uh, people use a lot. So we have that and then we have this initial condition. So easy one, so let's do it. So we're gonna do, um, of course, it's gonna be dy by the x equal to, on the right hand side, you're gonna have e to the x times e to the negative y. Sounds good, right? And then, well, you use, use the uh, property of exponential function. And then you move everything into of y on the left hand side. So you're gonna have one over e to the negative y dy. And then you have e to the x dx. Well, that looks good to me. And then, well, if you're done, if you don't like one over e to the y, negative y here, so you can do e to the y dy, right? Because, well, e to the negative y is one over e to the y, so you can switch, you know, reciprocal fraction, that one, get back to e to the y over there, and then you integrate on both sides, good. So you have integrate e to the y, you get e to the y. Integrate e to the x, you get e to the x plus c on one side, yep. Good. So if you want to simplify more, it's going to be y equal to log e to the x plus c. This is a general solution. OK, general solution. But the question asks for more because they, they didn't want to give you, uh, they don't want you to give the general solution. They want you to give to solve the initial value problem. So you need to use this condition. This means when x equal to log two, uh, you're gonna have y uh, equal to log three. So which means uh, you can plug in that one, y equal to log three, x equal to log two plus c. Well, basically uh, you're gonna have log three equal to log, log of what? Uh, e to the log two is two, right? Two plus C. And then that's mean three equal to two plus C and that's mean C equal to one, okay? Not bad. And then once you get a C equal to one, then the specific solution is um, Y equal to log E to the X plus one. So you plug in number one over there because you are done now with the um, finding constant C. Well, this is very easy and simple. You see, nothing is hard at all for this example number three. Uh, 
this is the first question on the final exam. So on the final exam, on the first question, I'm gonna ask you to solve separable equation. This is gonna account 3% of your grade. So, you know, because I told you last time that uh, on the final, we're gonna ask you one second, 7% on separable equation and homogeneous. So the first 3% of the final exam gonna be separable equation. So which we already covered it in one hour here. So make sure you know how to solve separable equation. You split the right hand side into the function of x and function of y. Split it by move y to one side, move x to one side, and then you integrate on both sides. The concept is so simple. Make sense? Okay, so we're gonna have 12 minute break. So we're gonna come back at 11 a.m. So we're gonna learn one more thing. So once we come back, we're gonna learn homogeneous differential equations. We're gonna learn 40 minutes more, I think, and we can chop up and end the class at 11.45. So let's take 12 minute break first. We come back at 11, okay? Sounds good? Anyone have any question? Let me know in the chat or you can open the microphone. Well, let's have a break. Ajanga, can you go back to the slide 13? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's have a break. Huh? Everyone come back at 11. All right, let's talk about homogeneous function because this is the thing that, well, before that, any questions? Anyone have any questions? All right, it seems like everyone give yourself like five, six, seven, and eight. No, no one give nine or 10. So, which means you need more practice. So you feel like you can do it, but you are not confident enough. That's what I think. So, well, it's pretty normal. So make sure you, when you study for the exam, do a lot of practice problems. So that will help you chop your skill to do this thing. All right, so, well, let's move to homogeneous function here. So the, this is the second technique that we're gonna learn. So we're gonna start from looking at the definition of homogeneous, homogeneous. So when we say the function fxy, this is a function of two variable. And have, this is the function fxy. We're gonna call it homogeneous. If you have ftx ty equal to t to the n times fxy. Well, first of all, don't be scared about fxy here. We haven't talked about function of two variable, but this is the same concept as one or single variable. So you have two independent variable x and y. Uh, the function will be given. So you once you get your function, if you verify this equation and it is true, so you're gonna say that the function is homogeneous. For example, if you have f x y equal to x squared plus y, you wanna see this function is homogeneous or not. So you can do f t x t y. So you plug in t x and t y inside the function. When you plug in, so you're gonna get t x squared and then plus t y. Well, hope that everyone understand how to plug in function. It's very simple, tx, plug in that, ty, plug in that. And then once you simplify, you get t square x square plus t times y. The thing is that if you can pull out to t to the end of x, y, that will, will call a homogeneous function. But this time, can you pull out that t? Well, you can see that what you can do, the best you can now is you have t squared here, you have t here. The degree are not the same. So which means you cannot pull out t squared. All you can do is you can pull out t. So this function is not homogeneous because it cannot be written as t squared half fxy. Does it make sense? So if I want to make it homogeneous, I can do x squared plus y squared. If I change to x squared plus y squared, 
So I'm going to change this thing to square. And then this is going to be t square and t square y square here. And then after that, I can pull out t square and then I get x square plus y square here. This is t squared times fxy, right? Because it's come back to fxy here. Good. That means this function f is homogeneous differential equations. Oh, sorry, it's just homogeneous. Not yet, homogeneous. What are we gonna say of degree two? Because why, why we call degree two? Because we have t squared here. If you have t cubed, it's gonna be degree three and so on. Sounds good. Well, this is how you check the function is homogeneous, okay? All right, so that is something called homogeneous function. Next, what are we going to look at is, once you know what homogeneous function is, if you see the differential equation, the first order differential equation in this form, m dx, plus n dy equal to zero. Well, this equation is called homogeneous. If x, uh, m, x, y, sorry, and n, x, y, they are both homogeneous of the same degree. If you have something like that, it's gonna call homogeneous function. And once you know that it is a homogeneous function, you're gonna have a unique technique to solve it. But the first step is you need to check that the differential equation is homogeneous first. That makes sense. For, for example, if I have x squared plus y squared dx plus, let's say, um, cosine x squared, uh, one second. Let's do homogeneous equation of degree two first. So I'm gonna say x squared minus y squared. So to make it easy, dy equal to zero. So this is in the form homogeneous differential equation by taking this as your m and by taking this as your n. Well, if you have differential equation, you simplify to this form first. So you get your m and you get your n. So the first step that you should do is you want to make sure that this is the homogeneous differential equation. So you define your M and N first, and then, then you check M and N. They are homogeneous first. How do you check the homogeneous property? So you come back to the definition here. So you need to check X squared plus Y squared and X squared minus Y squared they are homogeneous or not. We already checked x squared plus y squared. This is homogeneous of degree two from the previous slide. This is going to be the same thing, right? Homogeneous degree two as well, because you can pull out t squared anyway. So both of them, they are homogeneous of degree two. So if they are homogeneous of the same degree, then this differential equation is called homogeneous. Make sense? And once you have homogeneous differential equation, you can solve it by the technique that we're gonna learn in a few minutes, okay? Sounds good? Anyone have any question on that thing? Well, again, before you use this technique, you need to check that it is homogeneous first, okay? All right, so why do we care if the differential equation is homogeneous? Once you know that the differential equation is homogeneous, it's gonna be a lot simpler to solve because of what? So this is the idea. Well, if you do not understand this slide, it is okay. This is the background. This is the uh, slide for people who wanna dig into more theory. Um, so, once you have differential equation m x y dx plus n x y dy equal to zero, so you can simplify it to m x y dx uh, equal to minus n x y dy, right? Because you 
move everything uh, around. And then on the right hand side, you have dy by dx, right? You do mxy over minus and xy here. So you're gonna group it up to something like that. Well, the thing is that if you know that the function is homogeneous, m is homogeneous, and n is also homogeneous, that is a theorem in mathematics. If you know that the function f is homogeneous of degree m, and g is a function of homogeneous of degree n, if you do the ratio between f and g, it's gonna be homogeneous as well with degree m minus n, which means this thing m over n still homogeneous. Well, because you start from homogeneous differential equation here, uh, m gonna have homogeneous degree, let's say degree k. So n gonna have homogeneous with the same degree, degree k. Well, that means m over n gonna be also homogeneous with degree k minus k, which is degree zero. So m over n gonna be something of uh, homogeneous of degree zero. And if you know that you have homogeneous of degree zero, it's gonna be a function of y over x. So basically it's claimed that on the left-hand side here, you can rewritten it as, you, you know, you can simplify it. And at the end, you're gonna get r y over x. So it's gonna be a function of y over x, which means at the end, you're gonna get dy by dx equal to r times y over x. Well, uh, this is just the name of the function. So basically it's gonna tell you that you can simplify it to dy by dx equal to a function of y over x. And once you have this differential equation, if you substitute v equal to y over x, so you change your variable y over x to v, it's gonna come back to separable equation and then you can solve it. Separable equation and then you can solve it. It's gonna be the separable equation in term of X and V. Okay. Well, this slide is pretty cruel because this is the math technique, all math technique. Well, this is the simple proof of homogeneous differential equation. The reason why we care it, because if you start from homogeneous, you can get back to separable equation. And then you use a separable equation technique to solve it. Yeah, that is the idea. Well, again, if you do not understand this slide, it's totally okay. This is a proof. So you do not need to prove because you are not math student. But I just show it here because maybe some of you wanna know uh, how we develop the formula and how we develop the technique here. So if you learn math, like if you are a math student, actually, you know, like a major in math, you're gonna learn how to prove this thing. You're gonna learn how to prove this thing and you're gonna learn how to derive this thing. But okay, because you are a BB Tech student. So we're gonna just do it very quick. Just give you the idea. All I want you to do, like all I want you to know is First, let's learn how to use it first. The proof, just you know, sit on the side. If you understand, good. If you do not understand, fine. Well, let's look at how to use it first. This is more important. To sum up, let's come back from the proof and sum it up again together how to use it. So first, so this is the steps how to do uh, homogeneous differential equation. First, okay, simplify. You have to simplify first until you get mxy dx plus nxy dy equal to zero. This is your first step. Simplify until you get this thing, everyone. Uh, step number two, you need to show that M and N, they are homogeneous of the same degree. Okay, so first of all, you show, you simplify until you get that equation of that form, and then you're gonna 
get your M and N. Simplify until you get the homogeneous equation. Uh, so, sorry, simplify until you get the homogeneous differential equation and then check M and N are homogeneous first. Step number three, we're gonna copy the idea from the proof. The idea from the proof said that, well, we're gonna use V whole Y or X at one time. So then we're gonna let V equal to Y over X, or in other words, to just make it easy, Y equal to VX. Well, every time after you check homogeneous already, let's set Y equal to VX, okay? Always, okay, always. And then after that, well, look at this one. If you differentiate Y, You know, use the product rule. Use the product rule. Um, you're gonna get dy equal to v dx plus x dv. This is from calculus one. When you learn total differential with Ajahn Ratinan in calculus one, well, well, basically you know that this is a uh, product, right? V and x. This is a product. So you learn the product rule of differentiation already. Okay. So it's like, uh differentiate product F and G, you get, uh, I don't know how to call it, but I, I, when I learned calculus for the first time, I, I uh, what I memorize is differentiate U times V, this is uh, UDV plus VDU. It's like, this is a product rule. Well, I don't know how, to, how you memorize it, but this is the same thing. If you wanna differentiate Y equal to VX, so, you look at the left hand side, you get D bar. And then on the right hand side, you have a product V and X. So you're going to differentiate it. So you get V DX plus X DV. This is from the product rule, uh, but you call it total differential in calculus one. So once you have Y equal to DX, you have DY equal to V DX plus X DV. This is step number three. Step number four, replace DY into the original differential equation, then the original equation, differential equation will turn to a separable equation. Separable equation in term of X and V and then you can solve it. Well, this is four steps that you need to do for homogeneous differential equation. It's a bit long, but how do I say? It's a bit long, but uh, I don't want to say easy. It's a bit wrong, tedious and boring. So you can follow this step and it's going to make sure that you can solve it if you follow this step. Well, for sure, you can solve it if you follow this step, but it's just long and boring. Yeah, tedious sometimes. Okay, I already told you. All right, so we're gonna wrap up the class today by looking at two examples. So once we are done with this two example, we are done with the class today, okay? So let's look at it. Everyone, ready? 10 minutes for each example, and then I think 11.45, we can stop the class. All right, example number four. Well, let's start by, by a general, the general solution of this, this, this differential equation, dy by dx equal to y times x minus y over x squared. So this is the one that uh, you can simplify it easily. So you're gonna move, well, first of all, well, you need to simplify until you get m dx plus n dy equal to zero, right? So you're gonna simplify first. So let's simplify it. So on the left-hand side, well, use the same technique. You're gonna move x, dx over there, x squared over there. So x squared dy equal to y times x minus y dx. All right, pretty simple. And then after that, we'll simplify a little bit more so you can get the same form that uh, with the given equation, so you have y times x minus y dx, and then minus 
x squared dy equal to zero, right? So you simplify it. You didn't do anything other than simplify. And then after that, you're gonna have m and n in your hand. Now you're gonna have this thing called m, this thing called n, okay? m and n. And then after that, well, once you have m and n, so this is step number one done. So you have the thing in the form of homogeneous differential equations. So first of all, let's take a look at this thing. This is not separable equation, okay? Some of you are gonna say, Achan, why don't we use separable equation on this thing? Well, it is not a separable equation. As you can see, you have x minus y here. There's no way it's gonna be separable because you have x minus y here. Okay, uh, once you check step number one, step number one done, yay. Step number two, let's look at m and n and make sure that this is homogeneous. How do you know that m and n is homogeneous? So let's do it. Well, we're gonna set a side here as a box. So well, we have m x y equal to y times x minus y. Okay, is this homogeneous? So you're gonna plug in t x and t y. So you're gonna get t y, t x minus t y, and then you're gonna get t y, and then t, and then x minus y. And then, oh, okay, it's gonna be t squared y times x minus y. Okay, that is t squared m x y. So which means this is actually homogeneous of degree two. That is m, okay? At this, well, with the same idea, so you're gonna have n x y equal to negative x squared. Is this homogeneous? So you can do the same thing. N t x t y gonna be minus t x square, and that is t square x square negative. Oh, easy. That is t square times negative x square, and that is t square times n x y. So this is also homogeneous of the gate. Two, okay. So both x and y they are homogeneous of degree two. So clear, clear. So step number two, clear. They are both homogeneous of degree two. Does it make sense? Well, give a thumb up if you understand the first two steps on the reaction. Well, I'll wait a few more minutes for you. Okay. The yeah, good. Thank you for those of you who participate. All right, so this is the first easy two step now. Okay, everyone, simplify first, and then you check homogeneous. Well, if you get up to this point, you get 50% of the question, okay? Well, on the exam, if you show me this, you already get 50% of this question. Well, the rest of the work is step three and four, okay? Step three, we're gonna do this, okay? Let's y go to vx, okay? Good, let y equal to vx, then, well, we have the formula that dy is going to be v dx plus x dv, okay? Next step, what are we going to do, people? So step number three is done already. Yeah, just that. Step number four, well, this is the hardest one. So they claim that if you plug in everything back into the original equation, you're going to get back um, separable equation. Interesting, right? So, well, I'm gonna take, you can take, you can take this equation, the original one, or you can take this one, or you can take this one. They are the same thing, right? Because you just simplify it. So to make it simple, I'm gonna take this one, okay? I'm gonna take this one. So we're gonna start from, everyone look at this, x squared dy equal to y times x minus y dx. Now, this is not separable. But if I plug in the thing that I switch the variable, it's gonna be separable. So let's do it. X square. So I'm gonna plug in dy by v dx plus x dv. And then I'm gonna plug in y by vx. I'm gonna plug in, uh, well, let me use the stop bracket so you don't be scared about that. Okay, and then this is y is bx, y is bx, 
okay this step to this step okay this step that i circle to this step i didn't do anything other than plug in y equal to vx and dy equal to v dx plus x dv if you do this it's this guarantee that this equation gonna be separable make sense so let's do that so it's gonna be x squared v dx plus x cubed dv and then plus b x square minus b square x oh 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 oh, oh too fast too fast v x dx right and then uh, v x square dx and then uh, minus v square x square dx okay so i use my algebra skill very fast just plug uh, you know expand everything expand everything you, you know, I expand x square inside, so I get that and that. So I expand vx inside, so I get, and also dx, vx dx inside, so I get that. Well, may, hope this is not too fast for you. Vx dx inside, so I get a negative vx square, v square, x square dx. And then you can see that something cancel out now. This and this cancel because they are the same thing. Vx square dx, they cancel out. So at the end, you get x cubed dv equal to negative v square x square dx. Wow, 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 very good. Because you see like this is now separable. If you move v to one side, so you're gonna have negative one over v square dv, right? Because this is the dv, this is negative v square. Let's move v to the left-hand side. And then let's move x to the right-hand side. So the right hand side gonna have x squared dx over x cubed. Well, let's simplify it. So you're gonna get um, x dx on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you're gonna get negative one over v squared dv. You integrate on both sides because it's separable now. It's separable now. And then, well, here you're gonna have, well, let, let's do the, uh, how do I say, let's do the, integration skill so indicate one over v square this is v to the negative two if you indicate you're gonna get v to the negative one over negative one and that negative one gonna go it up to positive so basically you're gonna get one over v on the left hand side and then on the right hand side you uh hold on this is not x this is one over x Right, because one over x, so integrate one over x is log absolute x plus c. Wow, 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 this is our general solution. Yeah, this is the answer. This is the general solution one over b equal to log absolute x dx, but this is not the complete solution because it's still in terms of b and x. Because you use y equal to bx, you can switch it back, right? Because you know at y equal to vx, that means v equal to y over x. So actually the answer is one over uh, y over x equal to log absolute x plus c. This is a general solution you are looking for. Okay. Here, this is a this is a complete solution for this question. So well, you can see it is not that hard, but it's tedious. What I call it tedious because you have to do four steps. One more time is when you get the equation, simplify to get this form, first step. Second step, check they are homogeneous, good. Step number three, define this thing. This is claimed to be the very best substitution. So you can define this thing and then from the original equation, plug in everything trying to get rid of y and make everything in terms of x and v. That would be good. And then it is guaranteed by the theorem that it's going to be separable. And at the end, it is separable. You see that? And then when it is separable, you can move everything in terms of v on one side, move everything in terms of x on another side, solve for it, and then don't, do not forget to plug in back to get x and y at the end. This is a general solution. This is going to be one question on the final as well, 4% of the exam. So on the final exam, I'm gonna test you two questions on differential equations. The first equation, one second, huh, everyone. 
Uh, well, I'm pretty fair on exam. You know, I told, I tell everything. If you follow me at Penn Education, you should get full credits. Actually, um, seven percent here on the final. This is three percent that you're gonna do separate. Well, the first question, the second question, is gonna be homogeneous. I add a four percent. So this is a two concept that I want you to carry and get from this week: solve separable equation and homogeneous differential equation. This is these are the two easiest form that we learn. You know, there are more complicated form that I have it, but it will be in the clip that you can self study and it will not be on the exam. It's okay. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do one more example, I think. Well, well I have more, one more page if you need more space, but well, let's do an, the last example for today. Uh -huh. uh, example five, and then we're done for today. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's do it, 10 minutes. All right, so get ready, everyone. All right, example five, let's do one more. Be patient with me. Uh -huh. All right, let's do it. X, Y prime equal to y log y time log y over x. First of all, when you look at the e equation, you can see that this is not separable, right? Seem like it is no way to be separable because you have log y over x here. How do you split it up? How do you split log y over x to separable equation? It is impossible. What you're gonna do is, okay, Let's do the homogeneous differential equation technique. All right, so we're gonna have x dy by dx equal to y times log y over x here. Good, I switch y prime to dy by dx. And then now let's simplify. How do you simplify this thing? You multiply dx to the equation, multiply dx to the equation. Right, so you're gonna get x dy uh, equal to y log y over x dx. Good. Simplify it. Just multiply the x to the equation. And then after that, uh, you simplify it. So you're gonna get y log uh, y over x dx minus x dy equal to zero. Sounds good. And now this is my m x, y. This is my n, x, y. Okay, let's do a very quick check. m, x, y is y times log y over x. So that means m, t, x, t, y. This is going to be t, y, and then log t, y over t, x. Uh, and then you get t log uh, y over x because t cancel out. Wow, it's get back to t times m, x, y. Well, this means this is homogeneous of degree one. Okay. We have it for, for M. Good. All right. N, X, Y. Wow, this is easy. I like it. Negative X. So that means N, T, X, T, Y. This is actually negative T, X. And that is T times N, X, Y. Okay. This is also homogeneous of degree one. Okay. Again, if you check two step already, 50% will be given to you for this question, good. And then after that, well, let's do it. So we're gonna let y equal to vx then. So dy equal to vdx plus x dv. This is step number three. You can see that. If you follow the step that we taught in class, should it be hard? Simplify first, check homogeneous, the second step and the third step set this thing the fourth step from here or here or here or here just pick one equation and plug in y equal to vx and dy equal to vdx plus x dv it's going to turn to separable equation and you solve it okay let's do it so let's suppose that i'm gonna pick um uh, let's say let's pick this one okay x dy equal to y log y over x dx, okay. Okay, x dy gonna be v dx plus x dv, okay. And then equal to y, it's gonna be vx. And then log 
it's going to be y equal to vx and that x and the x. Make sure there's no y left. Y need to be, you know, eliminate completely. So it's going to be no y, right? After you simplify here, it's going to be no y. Like, y variable need to be gone. It's like completely gone, okay? Then you have, oh, well, let's simplify first because we gonna do it slowly. X B D X plus X squared dv. Okay, left hand side, good. Right hand side, you're gonna have uh, V X time log V D X. Mm, mm. Is there something wrong about this thing? No, that nothing cancel out here, but now you can see that you can group. Well, the technique here is you're gonna save dv on one side and dx here and dx, well, they can group it up together, right? So we're gonna move that to uh, the right hand side. So x squared dv, save it on the left. On the right hand side, you have vx block v dx and then minus x v dx, okay? Let's move the x on the right hand side. So hopefully we can group it up. Okay, let's copy this thing. All right, and then paste it here. And then, well, now on the right hand side, if you pull out, so you can pull out the x, so you're gonna have v x block v minus x v dx. Okay, like you can pull out the x way. So you can see on the left hand side, you have dv. On the right hand side, you have the x. Well, it is claimed to be separable equation. So why don't we try to um, pull out something? So or simplify more so you can get something that uh, you, can, you can claim that it is a separable equation. On the right hand side, you can, you can see that, hey, I can pull out v anyway. So it's gonna be v, uh, uh, sorry, I can pull out x. So it's gonna be x times v log v minus v, right? dx, okay, that is x here. And then you simplify it up. So move everything in terms of v, everything in terms of v to the left. So it's gonna be one over v log v minus v dv. This is on the left. On the right hand side, so you can have x over x squared dx. Okay, keep in mind that dx fixed on the right hand side, dv fixed on the left hand side. So all you do is you simplify now. So x squared here, move to right hand side. So it's gonna be x over x squared here. You're gonna move to the left hand side. So it's gonna be that. And then you simplify one more time. So this is one time v, so log v minus one dv. And then one over x dx. Okay, just cancel out and pull out from uh, v. And then you integrate both sides. Well, if you can integrate this, that will be done with for this question. Uh, on the left hand side, a bit hard. <laughs> on the right hand side, yeah, log x plus c. Well, all you need is you need to differentiate left hand side, uh, integrate left hand side. Well, calculus, you come back again. How do you integrate that thing? So hard, nah? Integrate one over v times log v minus one dv. Well, let's come back to calculus one. You can pick u to be log v minus one, and then du by dv gonna be a differentiate log v. So you're gonna get what differentiate log v. So you're gonna get uh, one over v, and then differentiate one you get zero. So which means you have dv equal to v du. So which means if you um. This is V, nah? this is V. So when you do a substitution, you uh, substitution from calculus one. So you're gonna get one over V times log V minus one. And then you switch DV here to VDU, right? DV to VDU because you already uh, do a do substitution and then this cancel out. This cancel out, we cancel out. So at the end, you're gonna have integrate. Oh, wow. And you know, log V here, this is also human. One more time, log V here, 
log b here. This is u plus one. So this is u plus one, okay? Log v, this is u plus one and then minus one du. This is a technique from Cal one, everyone. So log v, this is u plus one because log v is here and, and minus one is here, right? So that means log v minus one, this is log v equal to u plus one. So I change log v to u plus one. Okay, and that is integrate um, one over u du, and that's gonna give you log u, absolute u plus c, which mean integrate one over v times log, log v minus one dv. This is actually log absolute log v minus one plus c. All right, so this is obtained from u substitution in Cal plus one. Nah, because when you learn Cal one, so everyone need, everyone know how to do u substitution. Maybe it's, you know, 12 months ago, but it's okay. So if you have more time, you can, integrate this thing, but well, we're gonna use it on the left-hand side here. All right, so we integrate that, we get that. Whoa, this is a general solution. You see, huh? This is the, whoa, sorry. This is the general solution. And once you plug in V back, so the general solution is, the general solution is log, absolute log low let chain be to y over x and then minus one and then uh, equal to log absolute x plus c this is a general solution and this is your answer cup 